All right, you beautiful humans. There are a lot of videos flying around about the 2021 iPad Pro, and especially after the event. Pre-orders have already occurred. I did pick one up, and we'll of course talk about those details in just a sec, but I want to take a slightly different approach on this video than most do when it comes to your buying decision. Now, of course, cutting to the chase, I did pre-order the latest 12.9 inch iPad Pro. I went with the one terabyte version because I do want that 16 gigabytes of RAM, which as of this video right now, as I am recording it, is purely based on spec and rather thinking about anyone, even myself for that matter, being able to fully utilize that kind of resource very speculative. Now with the cost of this device, including the updated Magic Keyboard, which did come in this week, it's an obscene amount of money, I admit it, for an iPad, especially if you compare this to the fact that I could have picked up two MacBook Airs, approximately three Mac Minis, or just stuck with the Gen 4 iPad Air, which I think is more than capable and I will continue to utilize it in my business. I do have an extremely high risk tolerance and this iPad Pro pre-order is a pure business decision on speculation. Now, as far as the business decision, once the iPad Pro comes in and I do test, I run those tests, I run those benchmarks, I utilize it, but do not expect a video from me where I actually say that I'm returning this thing after two weeks, especially conveniently within that return window because that's actually not how we do things around here. Unless it's a complete dud, which I really don't expect it to be. But from a consumer perspective, it seems that Apple is forcing our hands or our wallets when it comes to these M1 chips. Just putting them in everything, whether we can fully utilize that resource or not. And of course, they're also testing those prices if you haven't been paying attention to the new iPad Pros. And they're gonna continue to get tested. And I'm actually looking at you, MacBook Pro 14 and 16. But let's really take a look at this from a business standpoint, because yes, this is a publicly traded company, but just like any business, they all have to make money. And yeah, the difference is with billions in the bank, that's an obvious metric for those uh, shareholders, but let's actually not deviate here. Now, of course, one, you have to find customers, or in Apple's case, you have to continue to appeal to your current base while trying to find new customers. And two, maybe you find that you have to charge more, and that metric is based, again, on, in Apple's case, the demand, which they never seem to run out of. And three, if you're cutting costs and you look at your overhead, including everyone from engineering, administrative, and R&D, and those, those departments are growing, the next thing you look at is manufacturing. So of course, could Apple have given us the option to purchase that 256 gig storage model and also given us that 16 gigabytes of RAM, giving us more options as a consumer and more build to order opportunities. But from a simultaneous cost cutting and revenue growth like strategy, you've got to streamline your SKUs. You may have all of these parts to build out any device that the customer would want, but after years of selling these devices, you know, they're continuing to gently nudge the consumer into what they think or they know that what we want. This is Apple's MO and of course this is built into their R&D. Aside from the displays and the fact that this iPad Pro that's more powerful, and of course this is generally speaking, many people will just purchase this based on first the size of the iPad and you know the display, and then of course the storage, which will be heavily tied to price. But for those of us that are a bit more versed in this tech, in like this tech world, and for those of us that are looking at this as a business decision, we've now become that additional tier of customer base for Apple. And Apple knows this. Apple knows that we'll actually put money toward that because we're not just buying pure spec, we're buying time. The fact that I just spent two MacBook Airs worth for one iPad Pro will actually come down to how this saves me time and actually makes my business money. So in my previous business ventures, we did always look at the manufacturing and try to figure out ways that we could work with the, the least amount of materials, streamline the tool and die process, and figure out ways that we could use a lot of the same materials across multiple SKUs. Now, of course, the math, you know, it may not be in your favor, but math just doesn't lie. Math, 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 math. But if it can take this system on a chip and keep things simple and streamlined while also having the ability to take the physical structure and the build on top of it to scale up to the M1X, the M2, while maintaining a reasonable expectation that manufacturing can pivot either way without missing a step, then this just becomes good business sense. So offering up different colored chassis and cases for the consumer, there's gonna be something for everyone, but you make a chip that can be housed in just about anything that you manufacture and allow it to be wide open, or maybe you keep it binned for a particular performance and efficiency benchmark, they're just gonna keep crushing those quarterly earnings. 
and something else here that I really hope that I am wrong about. So whether the, they end up partnering with AMD to offer up any additional GPU support, I think this is still up in the air because Apple wants to get these devices to market, but their engineers are also able to better troubleshoot their own hardware and software. And then you throw in the fact that you've got another variable of another manufacturer that that really just may not be the best decision right now. And maybe this will open up, I certainly hope it does, as the delays improve. But what we're doing here is we're having to wait almost a month for these devices that were just announced and pre-ordered. And I think about, you know, like think about all of the delays that even occurred with the M1, with those chips, the chips that were placed in the devices that Apple already had the chassis for because they were previously housing the Intel chips. How many of you actually waited months on those after the launch? So pivoting back over to the iPad, whether the next iteration of iPad OS is able to accommodate pro apps, which I still think that Final Cut and Logic will be here, let's also remember that there is a true diehard community of users out there that love iPad OS for really for what it is, and they're not the ones shouting about the ecosystem being a laptop replacement. And those of you that are in that camp, I love you to pieces for the fact that you have that kind of certainty knowing that whatever it is that you want, you have what you want and you're just happy with what it's actually doing for you right now. So again, this is actually just a prequel of what is actually coming up on the channel. Once the iPad Pro comes in, I will keep reminding the community to invest in the hardware and software that fits your needs. And if you need a device to get those things done, future proofing will not make much of a difference if you continue to be on the bench and you're not taking your at bat. And hey, just like math, I do tell the truth. And I also, if I'm wrong, I will admit it and I will correct myself. And I always appreciate your thoughts here on YouTube or over there on Twitter. I would actually like to ask though, did you end up pre-ordering any of these devices? If you did, let me know. Go do those things that matter. Keep rocking those faces. I'll see you right back here on the next one.